My interest was piqued by a story talking about the return of medieval diseases in unsanitary conditions in California. I did, I did a video about this a couple days ago or a day ago. And then I saw this story from, this is an opinion piece from the New York Times that says, America's cities are unlivable. Blame wealthy liberals. The demise of a California housing measure shows how progressives abandon progressive values in their own backyards. Now, Farhad Manju, who writes this, is not sparing any, any Republican in this criticism. But it is important to point out the massive cities that are very, very liberal, very progressive, that are doing a pretty bad job in terms of taking care of the poor, with an expansive homeless problem, with San Francisco hiring a rat and poop patrol. Yes, yeah, something is going on within these cities. Now, in the video I made about the spread of disease, I said I don't think it's entirely a liberal policy. I think it's the fact that big cities attract people and access to resources will result in homeless populations. However, Farhad actually brings up progressive politicians' policies, which shows it might actually be, at least to a certain extent, the fault of liberal positions. Now, before we get into all of this, check out timcast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's a monthly donation option. There's a cryptocurrency option, a physical address. But of course, you can just share this video, click the like button and comment, because when you engage the video, you tell YouTube you'll really like it. It really does help. And I do rely on your support. So it's really appreciated. But let's pop over to this New York Times story and see what Farhad's talking about. He says, to live in California at this time is to experience every day the cryptic phrase that George W. Bush once used to describe the invasion of Iraq. Catastrophic success. The economy here is booming, but no one feels especially good about it. When the cost of living is taken into account, billionaire brimming California ranks as the most poverty stricken state with a fifth of the population struggling to get by. Since 2010, migration out of California has surged. The problem is the steady collapse of livability. Across my home state, traffic and transportation is a developing world nightmare. Child care and education seem impossible for all but the wealthiest. The problems of affordable housing and homelessness have surpassed all superlatives. What, what was a crisis is now an emergency that feels like a dystopian showcase of American inequality. California, Hollywood, progressive activists. As I looked into these stories about celebrity hypocrisy, right, the, the story that I did yesterday, well, all these celebrities claim to be big progressive activists. They don't seem to put their money where their mouth is. Some do. I'm not trying to say that every single celebrity is an activist. I don't want, I'm not an absolutist. But certainly many of the high profile celebrity activists are just saying this. Now, I will issue a quick correction caveat for those that watched my video yesterday as, as, as an aside. I believe I misinterpreted Trevor Noah's statement about faux anger. But, I, but uh, I, I put the correction in the video so you can check it out if you want to watch that video. I'll put a card to it. So I just want to make sure you guys know there's an update on that uh, video. I don't want to get too much into it so we can move on. Farhad says, just look at San Francisco, Nancy Pelosi's city. One of every 11,600 11, residents is a billionaire. And the annual household income necessary to buy a median priced home now tops 320,000. Yet the streets there are a plague of garbage and needles and feces, and every morning brings fresh horror stories from a black mirror hellscape. Homeless veterans are surviving on an economy of trash from billionaire mansions. Wealthy homeowners are crowdfunding a legal effort, arguing that a proposed homeless shelter is an environmental hazard. A public school teacher suffering from cancer is forced to pay for her own substitute. The hypocrisy is glaring. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, people wonder why, Tim, why would you talk about this? Why will you blame liberals? I grew up in these cities. I grew up in these places. I don't know rural areas. So when I see this, I'm like, yup, I grew up in Chicago. I have seen what it's like in the, in the glorious blue state. It's got a lot of problems and hypocrisy. I've experienced it. Let's read on. They say, and there is no end in sight to such crushing success at every level of government or our representatives, nearly all of them Democrats, prove inadequate and unresponsive to the challenge at hand. Witness last week's embarrassment when California lawmakers used a sketchy parliamentary maneuver to knife Senate Bill 50, <coughs> excuse me, an ambitious effort to undo restrictive local zoning rules and increase the supply of housing. It was another chapter in a dismal saga of nimbiest urban mismanagement that is crushing American cities. Not in my backyardism is a partisan sentiment. Is a, I'm sorry, is a bipartisan sentiment. But because the largest American cities are populated and run by Democrats, 
many in states under complete democratic control. This sort of nakedly exclusionary urban restrictionism is a particular shame of the left. Bravo, Farhad. Bravo. I absolutely agree. When I was reading the story the other day, check this out. Medieval diseases are flaring as unsanitary living conditions proliferate. I, want, I always want to be fair and rational. Okay, So I want to point out the weather in, in, in San Diego and LA, it's beautiful. And this is a big factor in attracting homeless people. Okay, However, as I've been digging more into this, I think it is clear this is very much contributed. Uh, uh, the, one of the biggest contributors to the story, to this crisis, is failed liberal policy. And I don't know exactly which policies, but we can point to Farhad's opinion about these democratic states with democratic cities not doing what they need to, pricing out people, making it harder to get jobs, making it harder to live. And I have this. You, uh, oops, this is the wrong story, but we'll, we'll come to the Poop Patrol one. Forbes. The cities with the most homeless people, New York City with 78,676 and LA city and county with 49,955. The reason this is important, weather is not the primary factor. New York has pretty harsh summers and pretty cold winters. People who are homeless aren't going there because the weather's nice. Although it does play a role in San Diego and Los Angeles for sure, Seattle and King County which also has decent weather. I mean, it's always cloudy, which kind of is depressing. Only 12,000. Something is happening in these big cities. It could be their population. Seattle has way less people than LA. So actually, maybe uh, per 100,000 residents, Seattle may have way more homeless. But why would homeless people go to New York City? The population of New York City and LA County are comparable. Why would New York have more? Well, I don't know. But Farhad believes these democratic liberal you know, havens, are, it's part of the problem. And what you see is a typhus outbreak. In fact, in one of these stories I was reading the other day, a, a medical uh, researcher said there is a real risk of bubonic plague in Los Angeles. I kid you not. I don't know if it's in this story, but uh, let me let me just see if it's in. Uh, it's not in this story. It was in another story I was covering more recent where they said because of the rats, there are so many rats. They say, you know, that there's there's a genuine fear of a resurgence of these diseases. But you can see, look, medieval <laughs> diseases are flaring in California. Why? Seriously, why? You know, uh, well, let's read, let's read some more of uh, what uh, Farhad has to say. It's very, I think this is a great op-ed. There are many threads in the story of America's increasingly unlivable cities. One continuing tragedy is the decimation of local media and the rise of nationalized politics in its place. In America, the local problems plaguing cities are systematically sidelined by the structure of the national media and government, in which the presidency the Senate and the Supreme Court are all constitutionally tilted in favor of places where no one lives. There are more than twice as many people in my mid-sized suburban county, Santa Clara, as there are in the entire state of North Dakota with its two United States senators. But this is actually a really fantastic argument for the Electoral College, making sure your representation stays local and not national. The national popular vote would ensure that cities that aren't in the, like Seattle, for instance, aren't going to get the attention they need to solving their problems at a national level. The nationalization of politics shows that if people don't care about their own backyards and they aren't focused on these issues, the issues never get solved. People in California are probably super, like, actually, let me do this. Why is Alyssa Milano, why, is, you know, Snoop Dogg, why are these celebrities protesting? Uh, well, not Snoop Dogg, but, you know, th these are individuals who said they were going to leave the country because of Trump. But why are these activists complaining about Alabama and Georgia, a state they don't live in? It's the nationalization of politics. Meanwhile, the state they actually live in has a, 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 has a medieval disease problem, has a massive homeless problem, but these celebrities are concerned about what's happening in Georgia and Alabama. By all means, you're allowed to be upset about what's happening in Georgia and Alabama. I am no fan of those uh, pro-life bills. I'm pro-choice. I think this is an actually, uh, it's, it's an attempt to get in front of the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. I'll just call it like I see it. If you want to have an argument with me about these issues, I'm glad to sit down with anybody and talk about it and try and come to a solution. The point is, though, why should these California you know, celebrities be complaining about a different state without focusing on their own home and the failed policies that resulted in homelessness, disease, and this crisis? Again, by all means, you know, highlight what's happening in San, uh, in, in, I'm sorry, in Alabama and Georgia, uh, Missouri, uh, and uh, I believe Ohio, 100%. But I would love to see you speak up more about your own home and the problems you face and why you aren't going to fix them. 
Of course, some of these people may actually be doing this. I'm not trying to act simply because I don't know if they are doesn't mean they aren't. But I'm not seeing it. Okay. And so my, my only response is when I look at their Twitter feed and I see them complaining about like Me Too and stuff, I'm like, dude, you've got a serious homelessness problem in Los Angeles. Farhad goes on to say, that's why aside from Elizabeth Warren, who has a plan for housing, bravo, Elizabeth Warren, as she has a plan for everything, Democrats on the 2020 presidential trail rarely mentioned their ideas for housing affordability, an issue eating American cities alive. I watched Joe Biden's campaign kick off the other day. The only house he mentioned was the White House. And there's another really important point too. Millennials are being burdened with massive college debt. A lot of conservatives like to say, oh, well, you chose that. Sure. I, 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 I believe in personal responsibility. When I see my, uh, my young friends, well, my people, people my age, who are set with absurd college debt, my response, my first emotional reaction is, yeah, well, you reap what you sow. You sign on the dotted line. You got to go to that school. You got your degree. If you can't figure it out beyond what you, you know, signed, that's not my problem. But it's causing a housing crisis. Millennials aren't buying homes. They're not having families. So I can recognize while emotionally it's disturbing, there does need to be some kind of solution to that problem if we want to save, fix the housing market. And this contributes to all of these problems. He goes on to say, there is the refusal on the part of wealthy progressives to live by the values they profess to support at the national level. Creating dense, economically and socially diverse urban environments ought to be a paramount goal of pro- progressivism. Cities are the standard geographical unit of the global economy. Dense urban areas are quite literally the real America. I disagree. The cities are where two thirds of Americans live and they account for almost all national economic output. Urban areas are the most environmentally friendly way we know of housing lots of people. I very, I disagree. We can't solve the climate crisis without vastly improving public transportation and increasing urban density. Cities are extremely congested with a ton of pollution. So I I disagree. More than that, Metropolises are good for the psyche and the soul. Density fosters tolerance, diversity, creative creativity, and progress. And and those things are good things, okay? People learning to live side by side are good things. He says, yet where progressives argue for openness and inclusion as a cudgel against Trump, they abandon it on Knob Hill and in Beverly Hills, where the progressive celebrity activists live, who preach against Trump. Mean they, they don't allow this, not in their backyard. They don't put their money where their mouth is. And this is it's an extension of the video I made yesterday. The celebrity activists are hypocrites. The wealthy progressives are hypocrites. Not all of them. I actually know some wealthy Hollywood uh, actors who brought refugees into their home and I applaud them every day for it. That's that's, that's if you believe in this and you stand on principle, then then we're going to get along. But clearly that's not the case for Knob Hill and Beverly Hill. They they say uh, Farhad says, this explains the opposition to SB 50, which aimed to address the housing shortage in a very straightforward way by building more housing. The bill would have uh, erased single family zoning in populous areas near transit locations. Areas zoned for homes housing a handful of people could have been redeveloped to include duplexes and apartment buildings that housed hundreds. The bill has garnered support from a diverse coalition of businesses and advocacy groups and its sponsor, State Senator Scott Weiner, had negotiated a series of compromises with some of its fiercest opponents. Polls showed the measure to be widely popular. For the first time, something extraordinary looked possible. California's wealthy homeowners would abandon their restrictionist attitudes and let us build some new housing. Nope. (laughs) Instead, Anthony Portentino, a Democratic state senator whose district includes the posh city of La Cunada, Flint Ridge, and who heads the Appropriations Committee, announced that he'd be shelving the bill until next year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you get it, right? He wraps up by saying, reading opposition to SB 50 and other efforts at increasing density, I'm struck by an unsettling thought. What Republicans want to do with ICE and border walls, wealthy progressive Democrats are doing with zoning and nimbyism, preserving local character, maintaining local control, keeping housing scarce and inaccessible to the goal of both sides are really the same to keep people out. I'm going to give, I want to give a bravo to Farhad for this, for this op-ed for calling out the Democrats the progressives who don't stand up for what they believe in, who are very clearly lying, but also pointing the finger at Republicans and not making a partisan issue saying, you know what? It's all of them. That, that, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with you, man. Okay. I think there are good things about progressives. I think there are good things about liberals. And I think there are good things about Republicans, good things about conservatives. And I can recognize both sides have serious faults. One of the biggest concerns I have with what's going on on the left is the regressive identitarianism. But clearly, the issue of politics is not unique to one side. You have politicking on all sides. And for as much as a lot of Democrats want to point to Republicans, by all means, criticize them. But please, 
respect someone like Far, uh, Farhad when he's going to point out the Democrats quite literally doing the same thing. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, no, it's, it's actually the Republicans. No, it's actually the Democrats. Go for it. Argue with me. Comment below. I just think it's, it's refreshing to see someone say, they all bad. Democrats are not putting their money where their mouth is. And I'll take it. I will take it. Call out the Democrats for what's happening in San Francisco. Look, at they got to pay someone $184,000 a year to clean up poop throughout San Francisco because they have a poop problem. Now, here's what's crazy. San Francisco's homeless population is not that big. It's like, what, 12 to 13 percent of L.A. counties. But SF has the poop problem and they got to pay six figures, nearly two hundred thousand dollars to solve this. You've got serious problems in your cities. Nancy Pelosi's city and they can't solve this problem. It is rules for, for, for thee, but not for me. And that's how they operate. So now we have the final little little bit I want to add to this uh, story. Trump is sending migrants to San Diego. There you go, California. You don't want to accommodate these people. You know, California isn't going to do what they need to do. Well, Trump is, is he, he, the madman has done it. He said he was going to send these people to Democrat areas. He's doing it. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, but there's a reason why the Democrats oppose this. The activists support it. They do. PBS wrote a story saying this is a good idea. Good on Trump. Send them to these safe places. But the politicians oppose it for exactly the reason Farhad highlights. They're hypocrites. Plain and simple. I'll leave it there. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you want to support my work again, you can go to timcast.com slash donate, where I've got uh, various options. Um, you can share the video. Comment. Seriously, comment. Argue with me. Agree with me. Whatever. Just, you know, click the like button if you like it. I've got more videos coming up starting at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash YouTube.com slash Timcast, and I will see you all there.